Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this evening for my artist talk about Universal Garden, which is my show at Monument Square Arts, which is in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Um, we just had the opening the other day, and it was great. It was just a wonderful, really positive experience. We had great visitors, uh, lots of really good feedback, a few sales, which is always really nice, but just like a really good vibe um, overall. So I'm really happy with that. Um, so to start off, I'm just sharing, um, this was the invitation for the show. Um, and just a few notes for folks that are local or in New England or who want to see the show. Um, the show is going to be up through October 8th um, at Monument Square Arts. Uh, they are going to be open on Thursday this week as well as Saturday. Um, you can reach out to them on IG and you can also reach out to them by email if you want to make an appointment or ask any kind of questions. Um, you can do that right there. And um, we both myself and I know the gallery appreciate everybody's support. Um, if I guess that slide isn't going to work. So this is a picture of the front of Monument Square Arts. It is the sweetest, most just the nicest space. It's a tiny sort of long hallway where all the art is displayed with a, a small area in the back. And it just has a wonderful vibe. So if you get to visit uh, just the space itself is a treat. Um, so I'm going to just start off by reading my artist statement, which um, applies to all of my work. And I've sort of streamlined it to match the to, to be in context of this exhibition. So here we go. Over the past two decades, I have been making art which questions our long held understandings of time, space, energy, and matter. With a focus on visualizing the most lush and ethereal phenomenon of the natural world, my collages and drawings are celebrations of the ongo ongoing physical and spiritual evolution of our universe. As an artist who sees the process of creating art as non-linear, I find that I experience the past, present, and future lives of my subjects all simultaneously. The use of layered antique collage, which comes into my process with its own rich history, provides a building block for illustrating the complexities of time and the, our place in it. My universal garden creates a space for the viewer to explore and reflect on what was, what is, and what could be just a little bit of a preface, just about what I uh, use as my sort of guiding light when I'm making my own work. And I used it, of course, in creating this show. Um, so to tell you a little bit, I think what I want to do for this talk, which won't be too terribly long, is talk a little bit about all the pieces that got me to the show. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my influences, a little bit of the collage work I was doing before the collage work that you may know me for or you've seen in the show, and then just a little summation. So I'll start off here. Um, some folks know me <laughs> already. I am a lifelong collector. I am a collector of photographs. I am a collector of antiques. I'm a collector of books and paper. That has been the case since day one. So this was before I ever decided that being an artist is what I wanted to focus on, or even before I knew I wanted to use them in, I guess, an artistic way, in an, in an art project of any case, or anything like that. Um, so Collecting, it's it's been a, a thing in my family as well. People are really interested in antiques in my family. It could, could cross over into the hoarding area. I know books are a big thing. So I very much grew up with it. And I love to keep that in the forefront of when I talk about my work, because it very much is another piece of, like any 
anything else, like the, the subject matter or the inspiration, this part of my life is just constantly present in there. But at the same time, I'm also really inspired like pretty much every other artist by nature. And as a person who grew up as an indoor person, not wanting to be outside, um, I sort of very timidly approached nature <laughs> throughout my life as something slightly terrifying and I don't know what to do with it and I don't know how to be in it, but I am fascinated from a scientific perspective. Um, you know, learning in school, history, science, geology, any of those kinds of things, um, botany, but not really knowing how to fit myself into that. So along with the collecting, along with the nostalgia, there is that same fascination that most of us artists have with nature, but I hadn't in the beginning really figured out how to make that work without just plopping down a flower and something and being like, okay, now this is about flowers. It, I, I had to sort of build up to get to that point. So going into, so I went to grad school about 20 years ago. Um, I won't even cover the rest of before that because this is really when I sort of de developed my collage style. I had a couple of major influences that I still love today. Um, Philip Guston being one of them, um, the amazing painter and his sort of clunky, awkward, but not awkward forms and still lifes. And of course, commentary on society and beautiful palette, beautiful brush strokes, um, just a beautiful, way of organizing things, much like Mirandi did with his bottles. So Philip Gustin was introduced to me when I was in college. He's always been one of my favorite artists um, in the way he assembles things and scenes. So I was coming into grad school, very focused on that sort of sensibility, as well as these two artists. So Terry Winters, um, drawings, lithographs, paintings, and Louise Bourgeois of the same, sorry, we have a few more folks joining here. So these are two artists for their natural forms that almost didn't seem natural, especially in the case of the Terry Winters sort of approaching natural object, but not quite knowing what it is, but interested in the placement and the texture and the form. And then of course, all of this too is also visible in Louise Bourgeois, which brings kind of the heart and soul into it um, and her delicate touch. Uh, when I got to grad school, I had this love of using found materials and I wasn't quite sure how to use them. And I also loved drawing and assemblage. And as you can see, I have all of those things here, but I wasn't really sure what I was doing with them. All these materials, this need to put everything together, um, just sort of, out there, but without any sort of direction. I sort of then found myself really focusing more on the line than the object and creating a space where the objects could live. Um, so for a while, I really kind of put away the found materials because I didn't really know what to do with them and focused on creating a sense of space. So at the time, I didn't really know what I was doing because I was like, wow, now I'm doing this. Does it match anything else? But really, I think I was setting the stage for making the things that I make now. This is the environment that they live in. So these are some charcoal drawings. And so I had to take these two things, this need to use found materials and my need to draw and find a way to have them meld together. So when I found myself bringing the collage back in, 
it was to sort of bring together the sensibilities of line, composition, texture, material, science, in sort of approaching nature in my own way, the way that I could understand it. Um, and in this particular case, it is, you know, not really flushed out and color wise, I was really timid about the color. I wanted to make these natural forms. This is sort of something kind of like a jellyfish, but not a jellyfish or a tunnel or a cave using found materials and drawing, but it hadn't, again, been totally flushed out. But I had the vision that I wanted to incorporate nature in there. I knew that the old materials had an element of storytelling and history that could be part of my work because I am tend to be a very nostalgic person. So I wanted it to be present, but I really had to sort of flush out the form. And as I started to think about that, I would think about is nature as fragile and powerful and how to represent that in here. So I, in my walks and observations and collections sort of brought the collage to here, which was using book pages, using old materials, using um, just anything that I could find, um, just ripped pages, for instance, to find a way to capture that fragility and the power at the same time. And the power being that there was nothing in behind it. All of that time that I spent drawing, creating that space really was kind of more of a searching process. And this is presenting what I wanted to focus on. These wonderful, powerful entities holding nostalgia and history and all kinds of great things. And I made the choice that it was time to let them shine on the page on their own. Color comes into play here. It was hard to do that. I you know, it, it seems like a huge jump, but I slowly had to add it in. Um, again, putting the focus on the object or the entity, thinking about what it is, what it was, what it could be, all of those elements here without the background noise, <laughs> without the thinking about where they, you know, where they're being placed. They just are. And the collage clippings bring in a little bit of history or their past selves. We're looking at it now in the present. I guess we'll, we'll say present, although I don't even know how we can possibly define time. <laughs> and then with the supernatural colors and forms, I think about what the nature could be like in the future, which sort of brings me to here. And the reason I'm sort of like rushing now is because apparently I only have five minutes left because I don't have Zoom professional. I only have Zoom basic. So I'll get, just get through the rest of these slides before I get everybody kicked off. Um, so these are two pieces that are in the show, um, Interstellar Jewel Box and What We Found on the Moon. They're about three by four feet, just embracing all of that, the, the history, the nostalgia, the science, the fantasy, the reality, the past, the present, the future, and thinking about who we are, what we were, and what we can be. I find myself really interested in Hilma of Klimt right now, as I know many people are, who was the forefront of abstract art and sort of embracing the supernatural world, as well as Mary Delaney, who was a collage artist from the 1700s. She did not start collaging until she was in her 70s. It is an incredible story if you're interested in collage. This, was this piece here is all done with cut paper. Absolutely incredible. Just, just wonderful stuff. In terms of my uh, current artists that I'm really interested in, I, um, I'm really fascinated by the work of a drawing duo called Hip Kiss. That's what they call themselves. They're a German drawing duo who do these insane futuristic plant tower type things. I don't even know if I could define any long any more than that. And paintings by Jennifer Packer, which sort of have this loose emotional quality to them. 
um, and a little and some nostalgia in the in the um, subject matter. So now we're here in the present um, as a person who collects. This is what my studio is like. This is where I made all of the work for this show. And um, I find that I work best when I'm surrounded by everything that I love so that I can think about the past, the present, and the future of not only my life, but all of these things in front of me. And when we installed the show, and this is a couple of pictures of the installation, um, we decided that we wanted it to be very natural in the way we're presenting it. I had, you know, a lot of times shows it's all in a row. We had thought of doing a salon style, but we felt like this was very much an organic way to present it. Uh, one entity flowing to another, passing the energy along, um, and just giving it its own sort of take on the traditional gallery exhibition. Um, this is, so this one won't, does not look like it'll show. So this is also a window installation that I did for the show, which is just sort of a recreation of my own studio space, which is, as you could see before, packed with stuff. And I sort of took that all to the gallery window and put it out there for everyone to see. So this is usually how I work, um, stuff everywhere and sort of pick and choose sort of organically from that sort of mess into how I'm going to create it into, you know, a single work of art. Um, these are two pieces from the show, my lilies on the right and my sea melons on the left. There are drawings in this show. I just, because there's so much other stuff, I chose to focus a little bit more on the collage just because that's the, the bulk of the, the exhibition. Um, and you can see from here, I tried to make it be so that it, one thing would inform another, the garlands, the flowers, the abyss, and all of those things. So I'm sorry this is so short, but now this Zoom is going to end in 30 seconds. So I know next time I do this that I have to upgrade to professional Zoom, which I don't have. So I just want to say I really appreciate everyone coming and taking a look. You can always reach out if you have any questions or reach out to Kim at Monument Square if you'd like to know more about the exhibition. And I really appreciate everybody coming and seeing my work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.